Alrighty. Score 955. And Hyper Gamer. Play more Code Veronica Part 8. You join us back where we pick up with uh, Steve. Yeah, Mr. Um, that's not how guns work in real life, Burnside. <laughs> Yeah, I do like that feature though, just because it does let you target two zombies at once. Oh, it's a lovely feature. Again, this is just me nitpicking on game logic. <laughs> Which I do oh, yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah, what were we saying right before we ended the, uh, started this part? Uh, the duration of the videos. Oh, yeah, so that is one of the negatives of Vidly, but I understand why they do it. Oh, absolutely. Just because, uh,. Storage space is a bitch. Especially Bye. for videos. Videos are not oh, yeah. something that are uh, small. There's a reason why there hasn't been very many video sites that crop up after uh, YouTube. God, that scene was satisfying right there. <laughs> Just blow everything up with a single shot. Yeah. Well, yeah, almost I everything. Yeah. So I basically just go through all these side areas and kill uh, the zombies as Steve, so I can just come back through here next time as Claire, just uh, have nothing to deal with. It makes sense. When it comes to Steve, you're not exactly going to keep the ammo after this. Yeah. Oh yeah, how the hell do you get to that other breaker? Oh, the like one behind you, the fence? Yeah, the one behind the bars right there. Um, Not the fence where the grenade launcher is, but the the bars that says, oh, you could see a indigo thing right behind the bars. Okay, so that is in the field. <laughs> Riveting talk for discussion here. Uh, so these bars that you've just looked at here, the way that you these. get to these is from the courtyard where um, where Mr. Poor Shot was aiming down at Claire, if I recall correctly. Hmm. It's Weird. one of those. It's somewhere up through there, if I recall correctly. It's been a very long time since I've actually played this game, so parts of it are fuzzy. Yeah, especially considering how Code Veronica is a hell of a lot longer of a game. Hell, oh yeah. I'm at, I'm at about point twenty-two. Resident Evil One ended at eighteen for both series. Resident Evil One is a very short game, though. Yeah, that's why they had the the backtracking. Uh, absolutely, so. but I guess it's a good thing because I enjoy watching speed running. But the speed run for Resident Evil One is about thirty five minutes. It's a really wow. short game. Hey, have you? Do you know about the pause trick? Which pause trick is this? So in Resident Evil One, there's a pause trick. So basically, after successfully hitting an enemy with a knife or a gun or whatever the hell you want, if you hit the pause menu, it cancels the rest of the animation, so you can run past them while they're stun locked, or you can keep stun locking them with the knife. Interesting. It makes the knife OP. <laughs> I watched a man murder the shit out of a hunter with a knife using that trick. I mean, it's impressive, but in terms of usefulness... Eh. Well, it makes the game a lot easier if you are... If you're struggling, that. for sure. The, or if you're a speedrunner. You basically, you hit the pause button and let you run past the enemy instead of having to, you know, fight them. So, I'd actually start. need to double check because if I recall correctly, most speedruns, there are very few enemies that you actually need to kill. Well, I was done with killing, just like, uh, stun lock them to run past them, hit them with a handgun bullet, cancel the animation, and just book it. <laughs> oh, yes, this is a cutscene heavy part. Yes, where Steve gets to whine. Father! Although, to be fair, those submachine guns should have run out of ammo about now. <laughs> <laughs> like that right there in itself should have emptied the clip. Pretty much. Yeah, at least 
what was it, the Mac-10, no, like, the Mac-10 just had a normal size magazine. It's still just as stupid. Also, I'm gonna point out that everything we see of Steve in this game, he's the exact kind of person you would not want to have a firearm. Just saying. You give him the bladed, you give him a blade or a stick. <laughs> Don't give him the gun. He gets a stick. He is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying with a gun. Yeah, it's a miracle he doesn't accidentally shoot us. Or himself. Ah, <laughs> oh, this scene. My god. How unstable was that fucking <laughs> uh, walkway? Very unstable, apparently. You think this island has a McDonald's on it? <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure about that one, to be honest. I would hazard a guess to say no. I'm saying, because there's, there's McDonald's literally all over the world in random little places. I wouldn't be surprised that there's just one really fat guy who made all the walkways unstable. <laughs> you mean Steve's father? <laughs> Pretty much. And I will say it, I am a fat ass myself, I am allowed to make those jokes. Damn <laughs> straight. Now speaking of... Yeah, speaking of uh, where it's a miracle that he doesn't hit Claire... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, rapid fire got... Oh yeah, you were wrong. We don't get a, uh, machine pistols. The two pistols we get are semi-auto, but they can fire really fast if you just keep pulling the trigger. Oh, that's what I meant, but uh, close enough. They're not bad, though. Oh, no, they're not. Just use them. Father. Yeah. Father. I basically just use them all up to where I get the AK and then re replace them. Yeah, no, they're good, so I can't... I can never remember when the best place to use them is, because the ammo is very limited, but they are so handy. I pretty much just use them on zombies that I know I'm going to have to deal with multiple times. Yeah, that's Also, it's not as good on snatches as you said. Maybe I'm misremembering. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, I tried to use them in the later part... Yeah, no, he still beat the shit out of me. Yeah, Bandit Snatchers are pretty nasty, though. Yeah. Oh, man, there's a scene where we're going to the manor. Uh, for, like, the second time. Pisses me off, because I killed one of the Bandit Snatchers and the son of a bitch respawned. <laughs> like, literally, I see a rubber band arm just, nope, grab on the rail and climb his way into that platform. It's like... I literally killed one of you just to make it easier. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's cute. Hit. You thought that I was gone. Wrong. Pretty much. I s yeah, this game gives you so much ammo. So this is where I missed the door. On the other side of the jeep. Ah. Uh, that door there, or? No, that ain't a door. No, no, the door to your left on the screen. Where the stairs uh, are. No, nope, that ain't a door, that's like a picture. Ah. Yeah, large size relief, as I just said. Why the hell does that have stairs? That's a good question. Yeah, no, I end up going out here, and I end up going to the doctor's area. And they're like, oh no, puppies! I don't know why I run around here. Hey, there's oh, your tank. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Alfred stole my tank. He did indeed. He even crossed your name out on it. How rude. Man, that was pretty fun. Oh, the one time the worm gets a hit on me. Fucking asshole. I think I go in here to check to see if that door's unlocked. Spoiler alert, the venting hasn't stopped. No, of course not, because you need to actually go to another area to stop the vent. Yeah. 
And then I, uh, fucking, what's it called? Ah, uh, then I just run them out. I think I just go where the Lucas were. Yeah, you get a lot of use out of the cards in this game. You do, especially this biohazard card. Get you through a lot of the. Yeah, both of them do. And surprisingly, it actually makes logical sense where you find the card, too. I find it hilarious, though, the fact that later on, when we go in the room where the Bandersnatcher killed the scientist, uh, we just take the painting, like, yoink, not now, motherfucker. It's like, how'd you know to take the painting, is the question. It's like... <laughs> but then we're getting real deep into... Um, to <laughs> video game logic. Maybe, maybe... Oh, here comes the Bandersnatcher, too. Uh, maybe Claire has a vice of just, like, stealing random artwork that she picked up <laughs> It's just completely random, cheap. though, so there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just, this looks nice, yoink. <laughs> Pretty much, and she has a weird taste too, hence why she stole the skeleton painting. Maybe she picked up a morbid art sense after hanging out with cheap irons. <laughs> I spent too much time with irons. Oh yeah, this place filled with zombies. Yes, ah, I forgot that that happens. I think I waste some explosive rounds to say fuck it. Oh no, I, I swapped to put the regular arrows in. Yes. <laughs> God, I hate that gun. If they just added a little bit of that recoil. Oh yeah. My God, you know the bunk room in the Antarctic where there's uh, some, a bunch of zombies? Yes. In that room, though, there's three packs of handgun bullets and a thing of bowgun bullets. <laughs> it's like, dear God, there's so much bullets in this one room. It's worth killing everything just for the loot. Yeah, for sure, because you're not going to use up all that ammo to get in there. Damn straight. How are we looking for time? Uh, let's see. We got about a minute. Alright, sweet. Uh, bad zombie. Pretty much. <laughs> Come on down the stairs. And that's where I realized this bow gun's also useless on the stairs. Makes sense, there's no recoil at all. Well, it's more of it's just hard to aim up, because the, the bow gun also has a lot more limited range than it does in the RE2. Yeah, that's true. They just sail right into the floor. Well, I was going to say, that being said, in Resident Evil 2, the bow gun was kind of meant as a replacement for the shotgun. Yeah. Even though they never give you much ammo for it, which is a shame. Yeah. Alright. This has been Core 955. And Hypergamer. Play more Code Veronica. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.